Good morning and welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reform Presbyterian Church as we begin our day with a time of devotion. And here on Friday mornings, we read through the letters of Samuel Rutherford. And again, we give thanks for the opportunity that this time provides. But as we begin, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are the God of glory and the God of mercy. And to God, we pray for all those who were affected by the storms yesterday. To God, we pray for any damage to God that it would be quickly fixed. And to God, that they might know your peace in the midst of trial. And to God, we pray for our time and the reading of these letters today, and that your hand would be upon our hearts, that we might learn more of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, today, our first letter is going to come to us uh, from... Samuel Rutherford to Mr. Hugh Henderson. Hugh Henderson was first minister of Dalry, a parish in the district of Cunningham, Ayrshire. Now, we see here he is one of the eight ministers whom the General Assembly has appointed to visit Ireland for the pur purpose of planting churches. Let's read what Samuel Rutherford has to say to Mr. Hugh. My reverend and dear brother, I hear that you bear the marks of Christ dying about with you, and that your brethren have cast you out for your master's sake. Let us wait on till the evening, until our reckoning in black and white come before our master. Brother, since we must have a devil to trouble us, I love a raging devil best. Our Lord knoweth what sort of devil we have need of. It is best that Satan be in his own skin and look like himself. Christ weeping looketh like himself also, with whom scribes and Pharisees were at yea and nay, and sharp contradiction. <laughs> you have heard of the patience of Job. When he lay in the ashes, God was with him, clawing and curing his scabs, and letting out his boils, comforting his soul. And he took him up at last. That God is not dead yet. He will stoop and take up fallen bairns. Many broken legs since Adam's days hath he spelt, and many weary hearts has he refreshed. Bless him for comfort. Why? None cometh dry from David's well. Let us go among the rest and cast down our tomb buckets into Christ's ocean and gain consolations out of him. We are not so sore stricken, but we may fill Christ's hall with weeping. We have not gotten our answer from him yet, though that may be. Yet let us lay up our broken pleas to a full sea, and keep them to the day of Christ's coming. We in this world will not be even till then. They would take our garment from us, let us hold and them draw. Brother, it is a strange world if we laugh not. I never saw the like of it if there not be pakes like the man. For this contempt done to the Son of God by his people. We must do as those who keep the bloody napkin to the bailey and let him see blood. We must keep our wrongs to our judge and let him See our bluttered and foul faces. Prisoners of hope must run to Christ with the gutters that tears have made on their cheeks. Brother for myself, I am Christ's dotted one for the present, and I live upon no deaf ears as we used to speak. He hath opened fountains to me in the wilderness. Go look at my Lord Jesus. His love to me is such that I defy the world to find either brim or bottom of it. Grace be to you, your brother in his sweet Lord Jesus. Aberdeen, March 13th, 1637. Here we see Rutherford giving counsel and comfort to a dear minister friend of his who has faced great tribulation because of physical persecution that he has faced during his trip to Ireland. And Rutherford here is reminding this dear man that to suffer in the work of Christ is to suffer best. To suffer for the preaching of the gospel 
is to see the blessing of the Lord. You know, the way that Rutherford speaks of this persecution is uh, interesting. He says again, reminding us, brother, since we must have a devil to trouble us, I love a raging devil best. Now, this seems somewhat braggadocious, but when you think about it, it's much better to know who your enemy is. You, know, you can prepare for your enemy. You can make plans for your enemy, and you can seek the Lord's help for the enemy that's before you. Now, there's a little bit of uh, comfort in knowing what you face. And Rutherford here is reminding young Mr. Hugh that the Lord has a plan for him still, that this day of persecution is not the end, and that he has the ocean of God's grace and of the Lord's mercy to run to if he needs refreshed. And that's a good lesson for all of us today, to never forget that we have the never-ceasing fountain and that we have the sufficient grace of Jesus Christ for all of our needs. Let's turn now to the second letter today, uh, to my Lord uh, Baumarinoch. Uh, John Elphinstone, second Lord Baumarinoch, was the only son by the first marriage of the Honorable Sir James Elphinstone, the Lord Baumarinoch. He distinguished himself in 1633 for his opposition to the measures of the court in favor of prelacy. So here is a civil magistrate who is known for his defense of the faith. Let's see what Rutherford has to say to him. My very noble and truly honorable Lord, I make bold to write news to your lordship from my prison, though your lordship have experienced more than I can have. At my first entry here, I was not a little cast down with challenges for old, unrepented of sins. And Satan and my own apprehensions made a lie of Christ, that he hath cast in a dry, withered tree over the dike of the vineyard. But it was my folly, blessed be his great name. The fire cannot burn the dry tree. He is blessed now to feast the exiled prisoner with his lovely presence. For it suiteth Christ well to be kind, and he dineth and suppeth with such a sinner as I am. I am in Christ tutoring here. He hath made me content with a borrowed fireside, and it casteth as much heat as mine own. I want nothing but real possession of Christ, and he hath given me a pawn of that also, which I hope to keep till he come himself to lose the pawn. I cannot get help to praise his high name. He hath made me king over my losses, imprisonment, banishment, and my only, my lame Sabbath stick in my throat. But I forgive Christ's wisdom in that. I dare not say one word. He hath done it, and I will lay my hand upon my mouth. If any other hand done it to me, I could not have borne it. Now, my Lord, I must tell your lordship that I would not give a drink of cold water for this clay idol. This plastered world, I testify and give it under my own hand that Christ is most worthy to be suffered for. Our lazy flesh, which would have Christ to cry down crosses by open proclamation, hath but raised a slander upon the cross of Christ. My Lord, I hope that ye will not forget what he hath done for your soul. I think that ye are in Christ's count book as his obliged debtor. Grace, grace be with your spirit, your lordship's obliged servant, Aberdeen, March 13th, 1637, Samuel Rutherford. Here in this second letter, we see something that we've seen before from Samuel. He is the one in prison, but he is the one who is writing a letter to a man and encouraging him to see the Lord's work and be thankful for it. You know, this is a dear reminder to each one of us that we are to see the Lord's work. We're to be reminded that the Lord has a plan and a purpose in all things, and that we are to give thanks for whatever station we are in life, whatever position we are in, that this is Christ's time, and that we are to run unto him and find peace even in the midst of the darkness. For if we're in the darkness, we're in the darkness by the Lord's design. And if the Lord has sent us into the darkness, we know that not only is he carrying us in his arms, uh, but that in soon days he will give us the light 
of his marvelous grace. And may this be a comfort unto you today as we close out this week and as we enter into a season in which we may not know the future, but we know that the Lord has it in his arms. And regardless, whatever uh, the world may decide, we know that Christ is king. God bless and take care and have a wonderful day.